to our um, our final segment of the show, uh, which is a really really cool thing that we like to do. We got two more things to do. We got we got to talk about our um, music assignments that we give each other each week, mm -hmm. and then of course what else we're listening to during the week. So let's start with the music assignments because sure. I gave you something that was way out there in left field compared yeah. to oh what something we've been that's doing. not prog at all. But oh, it's the, not the, prog. The, the music assignments are never tethered to the topic we're talking about. It's just a matter no. of what are we digging. You know, Jeff is going to try to share with me stuff that I've never heard before, and vice versa. So we're you know, in addition to continuing to delve into these genres in greater detail. Tale, we're now going to kind of bounce around so jeff shared with me some doom metal which is really fun because doom metal has been on my bucket list for years now of like oh, i gotta check this stuff out because I, I would probably really like it it's characterized by being really slow really heavy really dark i like that kind of stuff and sure enough i was absolutely pleased with what i heard this week and me being on my big pirate metal kick you know we were just talking about ale storm before so i figured let me see if maybe maybe jeff didn't hear the newest album they put out the curse of the crystal coconut so let's let's start I with did. that so that was okay. my first ale storm right. album because i went into them and just worked from the most recent to the oldest from what's available on their spotify and that like three or four tracks in i got completely hooked in and i was like i gotta listen to everything this band did so i would love to hear jeff's thoughts on the curse of the crystal coconut by ale storm absolutely i am it's a pleasure for me to talk about this now i knew who ale storm was i knew who they were i heard a couple songs i knew they were they were a power metal band before they were called ale storm they had a different name like it was like Battleborn or something something oh i didn't know that yeah, something real generic and power metal-y. I think they have like one or two albums like that. But I knew of Ale Storm. probably awesome. Yeah, uh, I knew of Ale Storm. I knew like the, the videos they have online were always interesting. But this is like the first time I ever listened to a full album by Ale Storm. And this past week, let me just say, number one, it's crazy. I love it. I love this album. Now, sometimes it sounds like real great power metal. Sometimes it sounds like video game music. Yeah, uh, there's a lot sketchy. of like really weird synthy kind of stuff. It like really yeah, goes out yeah. of the field. Yeah, it, it's um, crazy. It, it, it had like a some parts that have like a, a like almost got a punk rock vibe to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're very similar in vibe to uh, a lot of folk metal because I, I really like a lot of folk metal. Um, the yeah, one there's I can... a good bit of fiddle. There's a good bit of hurdy gurdy. There's a lot of accordion. If you're into that oh, kind yeah. of stuff, you are in for a treat with Alestorm. Not just the Curse of the Crystal Coconut, but all of their albums. Yeah. Oh Coconut yeah. This from what I've heard from them before, I think this is the one that is the most like um, centered of all their music. It's like they know what they are now. You know. It's funny um, you should say that. That's really interesting. Yeah, I, that's right. That's how I feel. It's, it's you know the other stuff I, I heard. Some of it sounded like the older stuff sounded more like Corpaclani than anything. Now I think they have more of their own sound and their own style with mm -hmm. this album. Um, now vocally, it's nothing spectacular. Their vocalist is not a great vocalist, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. There's a lot well, of gang vocals. Okay, so <laughs> he's a pirate. Yeah, so he sings like a pirate. Um, now the whole album I thought was great, but there's there's a couple standout tracks I want to mention. Yeah, Treasure Chest yeah. Party Quest, the, the opening, opening track. Yeah. Oh my god. You know what you're in for. You know, it's just like bang and here it comes, you know. Yep. Um the one I like the most is uh Tortuga, I think it's called. Um, yeah. I think oh, I was that hoping mixes it was a couple of, Yeah, a couple of different genres kind of uh there's a little bit of like gangster rap in it and yeah. there's like a to break... mention, they they bring in the the as a guest feature the lead singer for Rum Ahoy, another famous pirate metal band. Right, right. Captain I saw that in the Yarfing. video, yeah comes in and he starts throwing down these like weird hip hop bits, but like the yeah. main riff is kind of proggy. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Slow, there's it's like a little syncopated a, staccato. Yeah, it's a syncopated kind of like a little singer doing there. Yeah. Of, yeah, it's nuts. Well, there's a bunch it's of really stuff neat. and some keyboard bits. At the end, there's like a whole like multi-part like chorus thing. And it, it sounds like something straight off a of Michael Jackson album, dude. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that was really nice. That I was like, this is one of my new favorite bands, probably period. Yeah. And I'm gonna check there's out the really nice vocal at the end, yeah. Yeah. compared to like all the other like like raspy kind of harsh vocals at the end there's this nice little chorus it opens up. And it ends. yeah oh it's oh, great it's, it is so good it's a so good. if i had to tell someone to listen to ale storm like that's a song i would give them first that's great um the one i the one i thought was hilariously catchy is shit boat yeah, <laughs> yeah I, won't even, I won't even sing the lyrics to it because they're, they're pretty offensive oh but, yeah. man is it funny not as it's bad as f with an anchor but we'll get there later <laughs> 
Um, and um, the other one was uh, Call of the Waves. That reminded me of a Halloween song. That reminded me of a power yeah. metal song. It's, yeah, it's, yeah it really is symphonic. Song. Yeah, great keyboard player. Yeah. I don't know keyboard players, but there's yeah. a lot of really cool symphonic stuff, like weird use of different chords and stuff. It's, it's great. So I, I, I recommend that album wholeheartedly to any – Anyone who wants to just listen to some fun stuff, man. And yeah. I, I said this to fun you before. Is the best I want to see them live. I, I've seen some live video. I think going to a, uh, an Ailstorm yeah. show would be yeah. fantastic, man. Post COVID, Jeff, we're, they going. Have a huge, we're definitely going. They have a huge rubber duck, you know, a big, like 20 foot tall rubber duck on the stage with them for some reason. Like yeah. they're, they're like the, the heavy metal, like, uh, Jimmy Buffett, you know, like they, they, they have, it seems like, they're, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, you know. Um, I love it. Ailstorm's great. Um, thank yeah. you. Another definitely a great uh, first exposure to the band. For those of you who've never yeah. heard of these guys and want to get into something a little different, check it out. There is something in the album for you, and I'm really glad that Jeff didn't hear it because I was kind of thinking, well, well, what am I going to show Jeff that he hasn't already heard before? So it's great. Yeah. So it was fun. Now, now it's your turn. All right. So I got and the band was Solitude Eternus, which is apparently one of the big definitive doom metal bands through the darkest hour was the album i got assigned and for me like given that i have really no experience with doom at all uh i i only knew a little small piece of what to expect but for some reason i kind of put it into my head that all doom metal was characterized by like a lot of screaming vocals and <laughs> this this album has none of that you know um and that was for for one thing it was kind of an eye opener i was like oh this is going to have more like the kind of higher pitched operatic more power metal y kind of style vocals um it definitely you know one of the biggest influences on doom is black sabbath and there are a lot of moments throughout this record that were just that just reeked of sabbath influence and i had no problems with that whatsoever um it was one of those cases where like with each successive track i liked it more and more there was a couple that i didn't care for um uh the track pain I really didn't enjoy because it just kind of like completely changes a few minutes in uh yeah. and like just like, it, it, like like i love songs that change and vary in in their form that's naturally as a prog metal head that's kind of something that i'm into but like i like it if it's done really really kind of smartly i hate to sound like kind of like this like supremacist like like all oh, my the music i listen to is smarter than the stuff you listen to but like there wasn't like a really like clear logical transition it feels like like the song was like really grooving for the first two or three minutes then it just kind of stopped and went to this like slow acoustic guitar thing and it just kind of droned on a bit and i lost interest i listened to the whole thing but then there like they, like i said there were a bunch of tracks that i really really enjoyed um there were a lot of moments and this is something that i was hoping i would get but i wasn't sure i would get uh, to kind of spit out some music theory terms there's a lot of use of what's called the phrygian scale which is basically a scale that's one of the only kind of scales it's kind of rare it, it's one of the only scales that starts with only a half step so you don't go as far from the first step to the second step in other words and there were a lot of moments like that basically anything that's in this like phrygian mode is really really dark sounding and it makes it sound really really kind of angry um and hurtful and i think that's a big part of what doom is going for you know with this kind of yeah. like, oh yeah I, the first song is called falling there's a song called pain you know the, the, uh, the eighth day of mourning you know the ninth day of awakening there's all these like kind of dark themes around the content of course i didn't pay much attention to the lyrics um actually i can't remember a single lyric that was sang because i only listened to it one time just to get a first impression and then i figured we'd get it and kind of talk about it a little bit um I'll, i will probably listen to it again as well as other stuff by this band because i really liked the sound i heard i liked the overall tonal harmonic language of the writing you know i liked a lot, a lot of the riffs were really heavy feeling and they weren't like over in your face like crazy trying to be heavy they were just heavy which i think is a really hard balance to strike in a lot of metal so that part of it i really enjoyed uh like i said most of the songs on it were like really good like Ooh, like I get those moments where I really, really like, I like this and I want to hear this again. A lot of those Phrygian rips were really, really cool. Um, I forget what song it was in particular that really heavily uses the Phrygian scale for a lot of its bits. It's one of the first songs on the record. I don't remember what it's called. Um, what else? Yeah, a, a lot of uh, the vocals were great. You know, there, there's a lot of like these really like kind of open sounding vocals because they're harmonized with fifths. 
instead of with thirds which are more melodically sound it's kind of more of like a kind of static sounding like something you hear more like in gregorian chant which kind of gives mm -hmm. it a little bit more of that antiquated kind of like this is something very timeless and very mysterious also further darkening the overall impression it creates uh so I, I was really impressed and it was really surprising to me to learn that doom is not really so much characterized by a lot of the lower screaming kind of stuff which for me screaming is uh i have a really particular taste with screaming vocals um anyone you know a anyone who's like been following this along we talked a little bit a couple weeks ago about new metal uh bands like slipknot that have a lot of screaming vocals and and i in that episode i openly confessed that like when i was a kid growing up i really didn't like screaming at all that was like not my thing uh and it took me a long time to like get into it but even now i have a kind of particular taste you know like certain styles of screaming i, I enjoy more than others um it's why i like a lot of the kind of darker gent stuff because the screaming there is like really really raw and aggressive and guttural um you know we, we recently we did a black metal episode and to be perfectly honest um I, I was never really a big fan of the, the the style of screaming used in black metal uh this is probably gonna be a real hot take but i've always found it to sound kind of weak you know, like they're trying to sound angrier and scarier than they really are, where it doesn't really have that same gut punch that I get from screaming in other genres of metal. So I was expecting, I was like, oh, I'm going to expect a lot of screaming and I'm not sure I'm going to like that because the screaming is either going to deliver really well and I'm going to like it or it's just going to fall flat and I'm going to be like, ah, Doom is kind of a whatever thing. But there wasn't any screaming at all and it was a really interesting surprise. And I'm looking forward to hear, you know, what the rest of Solitude Eternus has to offer because there was a whole list of albums that are that all looked pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm pretty visual, so artwork is pretty important, you know. Um, I really like all the Alestorm stuff because there's a, this really cool like skeleton pirate mascot that's on all the albums. It gave me a little bit of like Eddie vibes with Iron Maiden and I love the imagery that a lot of those bands project uh and from the the couple of glances i took at solitude eternus's discography it looks like some pretty cool stuff that i think is going to suck me in so i'm going to definitely check out other stuff and definitely ask jeff and ask other metal heads out there i might make a post maybe on the facebook group you know uh, some of you out there that are really into doom you know give me some other suggestions because i'm open to trying anything uh, even if i don't like it i'll probably listen to the whole thing anyway just to give it a fair listen so yeah i liked it it was cool uh, and i'm looking forward to hearing more and discovering more of what's out there so i'm, gl I'm glad you liked it i wasn't sure if you were going to now you were talking about uh you know screaming and growling and this and that uh the subgenre of doom that i gave to you is usually called traditional doom okay and traditional doom vocalists are like the vocalist from salt to eternus um his name is robert lowe he's okay. one of the best He's one of the best in the genre, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, he he also, sounded like a power metal singer, pretty consistent. Yeah, and I like. Yeah. That he, has, I he, he has. He has some good. power. He has some power behind his voice, and yeah. um, pretty nice tone. Um, a great range. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's um. He's actually in a band called Tyrant now, which they're more of a power metal band. Uh, he did a brief stint with the band Candlemass, which is another doom band. Which um, they're like old school doom. They've been around since the '80s. Uh, he did a brief stint with them for, I think, three or four albums. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff. Uh, they're actually from Texas, and um, oh, okay. which is strange because they don't sound like they'd be a Texas band. Yeah, they're not uh, like a Southern yeah. rock kind of trashy, <laughs> glammy kind of thing, you know, um, as much as I love they're, Pantera. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're clearly from Texas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right, know. right. Um, I, I, I don't know if they're from the same um, area of Texas or not as Pantera, but I... I I'll say that they are, maybe they're not. I have no idea. Uh, but these guys are one of my favorite Doom bands. Um, most of their that. albums are, are fantastic. But that one that I gave you was my personal favorite uh, Doom album, next okay. to like Black Sabbath. Like that is like yeah. the top. That's the cream of the crop, man. That's like one of the best Doom albums in my in my opinion that's ever been made. Yeah, I um, thought it was solid. Like I said, there was only that one track that I kind of didn't care for, but everything else I loved. And that's weird because I, I I like pain. I like that out. I like that Fair track enough. a lot. <laughs> uh, I can see I can see where you're like you're you're going though with the abrupt stop. Yeah. So I literally thought point. something went wrong with like my phone. I was like, did it like switch to like something else in my library or like something ha happened with Spotify? Did like something get shuffled? Did I like shake my phone the wrong way and change bands entirely? It was kind of off putting for me. Well, the nice thing about that, I'm glad that you liked it. And uh, the nice thing about doing this podcast is we get to um, 
We get to just kind of show off what we like to the other person who maybe, you know, like, hey, Doom has never been popular. It's never been like when you, yeah. you know, you were growing up, you know, enjoying your, your slip knots and your, and, and uh, your new metal. I was like, Soul to Eternus, uh, like, you know, why does anyone like this stuff? You know, it, it, cause it, it's not going to be a popular genre because Something we could all say as prog fans, you know, yeah, like, yeah, really. Yeah. Like how many people that don't even know Kansas's stuff, you know, exactly. Yeah. You know, so I, I you. like, it's, it's nice that you could, we could at least, you know, show each other like, Hey, listen to this. Cause I, like you said, you're open to anything. And so am I, you know, the weirder, the better man i got some other stuff i got for you next week that is going to be uh even more of a departure but i yeah, think you'll, I cool. think you'll I'm dig looking it. forward to it 